Welcome to I Finally Get It. This week, we're happy to have Keisha Buto of Beacon of Light. Joining me in studio, as always, is Dustin Webb, our producer. I'm your host, Jeff Martin. Let's get it. Okay, here's my moment. I got to set it up, though. So I finally get that business takes time to grow. Now, I know that's very simple, right? A very simple concept that you would think anyone would know, but I'm one of those sort of really high achieving people. Yeah. And so I'm celebrating my first year actually in business. This January was my first year of running Beacon of Light. And I have to say, I was very blessed. I had a very successful year. I was able to make a lot of connections, great clients, both in consulting and coaching, um, connecting with a lot of organizations to be able to go and do different public speaking opportunities and trainings. And it was all wonderful. Now, I'll tell you, great as all that was, I found myself in December of this past year and a lady well intended. She came up to me at an event and she said, Keisha, I've been following you. I've been following Beacon of Light. So many great things you have going on. What's next for Beacon of Light? And I knew the answer to that. I knew that I was going to be building on my foundation. I knew what my next steps were. But that was a moment for me that said, "Okay, is that good enough? Right. Is all the success that I had this past year, is that good enough? And I found myself moving into this past January thinking, okay, I was building on my foundation and the plans and the programs that I was ruling out and the way that I was going to set up my clients' coaching packages, was all that going to be good enough? And I wanted to take my one year and turn it into five years, right? And so I was stuck into this frustration that I was in, like a pattern. And I found myself on the phone with my sister, who is like my best friend, but she's also my coach and she does all things for me, right? And so she said, well, it sounds like you had a really good year this past year. I said, yeah. She said, man, you've listed a whole lot of accomplishments. I said, yeah, but I'm ready to like do this thing. I got to do it big. And she said, well, You're almost wanting to treat your business like it's a teenager when it's really just a baby. Yeah, no doubt. And it made me take pause. And I said, hmm, I said, what do you mean more about? Tell me some more about that. And she said, you know, it sounds like you've had a really great year. And you got to remember that like Beacon of Light is a baby, right? Think about parenting. And I have two kids of my own and how you have to figure it out. There's no playbook. There's no guide of an exact way to do things. But You've got to figure out how to grow your business and you got to be okay with it being a baby. Let it be a toddler as we move into year two. And that was really just the way to settle me. It gave me some peace that in order for me to do something, in order for me to have my business be of excellence, what I really lean into and for it to be great, I was going to have to be okay with it taking the time to grow and building the playbook just as it would be when you're raising kids. Yep. Yep. So that was my moment. We try to envision what it's going to be. And inevitably we we get out of the gates and it goes off course, right? If you have a vision and you let it become what it's going to be, Mm -hmm. really your customers will tell you what they need, Mm -hmm. you know, and you can adjust on, on the fly. Uh, One thing it just made me think, have you ever heard of the gap in the gain? I have. A gentleman told me about it. I've never read it, but he did tell me about this book. I invite you to read that. Okay. Second person, so it's a sign. Yeah. yeah, So it's a sign. Yeah. (laughs) I think you have to appreciate what you have accomplished Mm -hmm. and really Mm -hmm. look at that. Mm -hmm. Uh, And those are the gains. Yes. Right. Don't just look at the gap and how far you have to go. Right. 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 Because you'll get a little, it's a little depressing and. Right. It can feel overwhelming. That's right. It can feel completely overwhelming and you can lose sight of all the goodness that happened if you're only focused on the next. And so that's a place where I've been in is making sure that I'm being in the present and I have to work for that because I'm a very futuristic type person. I love to dream, see all the things, but you've got to, when you're in business and especially building it, from the ground up, you've got to just be okay with being in the present, being in that one phase, that one year that you're in and give it your best That's right. and let year two, year three, the next years to follow, just let it be the best at what it's going to be in that particular season That's right. because nothing's permanent. Like it's going to continue to grow and evolve and you got to be okay with that too. Yep. Like this is good for me to even say it out loud because I see it, I'm living it, and I know it now as being a business owner. So what did you do before Beacon of Light? So I worked in nonprofit. I was, Mm -hmm. uh, my last role was chief operating officer at Girl Scouts here, our local council. Um, Did all things operations, did the program, the recruitment, the membership coming in, the support, the cookie program. I know everyone knows about that. And so I did all things um, on the operations, business processes, and I loved what I did. But at the end of the day, And everything that I was doing at Girl Scouts, building young leaders and working with them, encouraging them for their future and the employees that I got to work with, it always landed back to the people for me. 
That's yeah. where I found my greatest joy when I could see someone having a light bulb moment when they're winning, when they're growing both personally and professionally. And so I took that time that I spent, spent 15 years in that organization and just really brought with me all of those experiences from the business side of the company, but then also the people side, because that's what I cling on to the most when I think about that time. Yeah, I love that. So, so what are you doing now with Beacon of Light? So I am working to provide professional development opportunities uh, in multiple ways. And so on the consulting realm, I go in and I help companies. I always say the best way to describe this is I help people define what success looks like, help them to find clarity to where it is, what their goals are and where they're trying to go. So on the business side of things, I go in, I help with whatever consulting projects that are needed. So it could be looking at business processes. It can be looking at on the nonprofit side, maybe there is some board development that's needed, some fund development efforts that are need to be created, programs, just whatever is needed in the business where they've identified that I'm a good fit for. I go in and I help with that on the consulting end. On the coaching side of things, I just absolutely love it. I'm leaning into that a whole lot this past year and just helping people define their success and really identifying what makes them the most happy in their day-to-day basis, like when they're in the workplace, what strengths do they have? Uh, If there's obstacles and they're trying to overcome them, I get to be their support for them and hold them accountable along the way. Yeah, sure. That accountability is huge. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then on the professional development side, just in public speaking, I go and I do a lot of conferences, lunch and learns and bring content that are more focused on interpersonal skills, communication, relationship building, the importance of that in the workplace. And so I'm all things people defining success and creating the path to help them to get there. That's great. Yeah. So what would you say, uh, what's your favorite thing that you've learned along the way in the first year of business? I mean, the first year is is often tough. Oh, goodness. That's a good one. I've learned a whole lot. But one of my lessons that comes to mind in the process, like I said, of uh, realizing that there's no playbook created for this and that you've got to be comfortable to stand on your own. If you have a vision and idea, you could do a lot of research. There's a whole lot that's out there that'll tell you how to consult and how to coach and how to be a good public speaker. But you got to be confident to be who you are, truly showing up as your true self and knowing who you are. And remembering in the time what your worth is and where your worth comes from, Um, because in the service industry, you know, there's a whole lot that you go out and you help to provide professional development. But you got to be confident that your wisdom and the experiences that you bring is enough to help somebody else. And so really for me in the time of identifying worth and knowing is that I put a value add into my services so I know what my services cost me, cost others and also knowing that my, what my worth is yeah, um, when sure. I bring that to the customer. You know, I'll be honest with you. So many people don't get that right away. Mm. It takes years and years, decades sometimes. It takes time for sure yeah. because you could take it, you could take it personal, right? Oh, yeah, and for sure. I was in a uh, time, I remember people telling me well-intended advice, well-intended. They would say, charge your worth, charge your worth. And I will never forget sitting at my office one day and I was working on a contract proposal and I remember sitting there thinking, well, am I worth this amount? Maybe am I worth this amount? And I was going through different numbers and trying to figure out what the dollar amount was that I was going to put on that contract. And that was a moment for me. I was like, man, am I worth that? And so I got up and I took that to prayer. And I remember being in prayer and really hearing and and hearing the Lord speak to me that said, I've already paid your worth. No one can ever pay you your worth. You've got to identify what your services are worth. And so it was a way for me to disconnect me personally, my personal worth to what my services are. And so ever since I I found that and I can stand still on that, I can now connect that and keep that um, not to be a personal matter when we're discussing price points. You know, in price, it's it's really what is it worth? What is the outcome worth for them to do? Mm-hmm, it? Mm-hmm. And, and they always know yeah. if, if you don't do it. It's, they know what it's going to cost them, mm-hmm. you know, so it's, it's you got to find that that moment. So I asked you your your favorite thing. What, what's been the hardest lesson you've learned in the first year? <laughs> the hardest lessons is that you have to ex- accept the fact that you're going to have some failures. And I've tra- yeah. learned, tried to learn to begin to look at failures as lessons learned and gifts and opportunities. Amen. Amen. That's, um, that, that's, that's a huge light bulb moment right there. <laughs> Well, good, good. I um, I truly did. You know, we all we all talk about the fact that there are lessons to be learned and that mistakes can be looked at, you know, as gifts and opportunities. Um, and we can we can hear it, we can know it, but then when you have to experience it, it's a whole nother ball game. I've just learned to lean in and understand that 
not every, I'm not going to know everything. I'm not going to have all the answers. There's going to be things that I'm going to learn along the way. And that's going to be a gift that I'm taking with me into my next opportunity. And so I had a lot of gifts that I'm taking with me into year two because I hadn't done some of the things before as far as price points, putting together packages on the business side of the work. And I had to be okay, okay and be vulnerable enough to be able to fail yeah. forward. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, just let it let it happen, but with direction. Yes, absolutely. That's huge. Who inspired you to go out on your own and start Beacon of Light? And why the name Beacon of Light? I just love it. So this wasn't something that I actually had <laughs> um, sought out to do. I was um, in my career working in nonprofit, loved what I did. Um, but it was a very pivotal moment for me where I just instantly began to know toward the end of that season that I had done everything I was supposed to do there. I actually thought I was going to leave one exec role and go into the next. That was my plan. I was going to find the next job. But during that journey, when I took the leap to leave my employment, I remember thinking, I didn't want just another job. I didn't want to walk into um, just another position. I wanted something that was going to be legacy worthy work is the best way I can describe it. Um, And so I took that journey. I started interviewing for different jobs and seeing different opportunities out there and nothing felt like it was going to be the right fit for me. So the best thing I can tell you about my journey or what inspired me was that I really believe it found me. It was I believe it's purpose driven work. It's part of the reasons why I'm here, I believe, to really just be an encouragement and a source of light for other people. Over my year of figuring out what my next was going to be, this work found me. I would meet with someone in the coffee shop and the next thing I know, they're asking me, could you be my coach? And applying for a job, turning it down and then them calling me back and saying, hey, can you onboard my new executive director? And someone offered me opportunity to go and do a public speaking presentation. It just opened one door after the next. And so it was really a creation of just what I believe my plan was for this season of my life. Reason it being beacon of light is because um, when you think about um, a beacon and how it can help to guide people and be the light and guide them into their intended purpose, their intended um, direction in life, I love to do that for people. So beacon of light was just the right fit for um, my passion and the work that I wanted to do in my community. Yeah, that's a pretty brave moment when when you go from being employed for 15 years mm-hmm. um you, you're kind of calling all the shots and then you say you know i'm gonna be an entrepreneur so for somebody out there in, in that position mm-hmm. give them a little bit of advice and say look you know just what do you think that they need to hear it's going to be a big it's going to be a big leap especially if you're a, if you're used to and comfortable with working in a workplace where you have your you know your assignments you begin to create it you move something forward and you have that salary that you can lean on every yeah, single yeah. two weeks or whatever your payment terms are when you make that step into entrepreneurship it is you really creating everything from scratch in, in my case it was and to to know The fact that it's going to be a journey, it's not going to always be easy, but it's certainly going to be worth it at the end of the day. And there are going to be fears. There is going to be some things that can seem very scary. They're very uncomfortable unknowns. I'll be honest, I feel like I live in uncomfortable almost every single day because I'm doing something new every single day. I'm pushing myself and challenging myself, but I wouldn't want to be in any other place because that's where I personally am growing. And I know that I can bring that to the clients and the the customers that I serve on a daily basis because I understand what they're going through because I too am a business owner. So certainly just understand that it's not going to be an easy journey, but it's going to be well worth it. And you just got to be courageous. And that doesn't mean that you're not going to have fears. It means that you're going to show up despite the fear, despite the uncertainty. That is outstanding. Thank you. So what's next for Vegan Alight? Oh, goodness. Year two. That's what's next for Beacon of Light. I'm really excited about that. Um, But what's next is just really building on the foundation that I created last year. And so um, on the public speaking side of things, I've created a lot of curated topics that are really great. I find that they're being well received in the market. Um, And then building on that, meaning I'm now realizing that there's a gap from hearing a great presentation at a lunch and learn or at a professional development day in your workplace, but learning how to implement that. And so I identified that that gap was there last year and where people want it more, but I didn't really have an avenue to offer them that yeah. more. Yeah. And so I've since created some uh, coaching and consulting packages to be able to bring into the company to be able to provide them to discover more and to dig in more into the topics versus a one hour, two hour, three hour workshop. Um, this gives more opportunity for them to further develop and really implement that into the workplace. So that's on the um, speaking and the consulting side of things. Uh, the 
coaching side, I'm really excited about bringing in the positive intelligence program. So it's all about positive intelligence is all about really being able to change the way that you think from maybe wanting to quickly go into the negative side of things and experiencing the world into the positive side. And so really bringing that into my one on one sessions with our clients and in group sessions of having them really understand how we all have an internal judge and we all can do some self-sabotaging when we're trying to reach our goals. And so just continuing to build on what I've created and remembering I got to be present in this moment. And I kind of think about it as gather the skills, gather the resources that you need, put your head down and do the best work that you can do for each client. And the rest, kind of how you said earlier, it's going to either find you or the path will be created and the vision will be made clear. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's that's wonderful. You come into contact with a lot of people. How do you leave them different and better just because they engage with you? I like to say that I like to give transformative content if I'm speaking or have a transformation moment whenever it's on a one on one. And I do that by listening very well. I try to be an active listener and really hear what the person is trying to tell me and even maybe some things that they are not saying yet, but it's at the tip of their tongue or it's in their heart. And so I really listen and then I just ask for that discernment. I always pray for discernment that I say the right thing that'll touch them and be able to meet them where they are. I really believe in just being open to say, vulnerable to say, most of the time, it's sometimes the most simplistic things that needs to be said that can really change the way people see or interact with others. And so oftentimes when I'm doing professional development trainings, I take a deep breath because I'm like, this is not going to be. Um, this major big takeaway, right, is what I, I used to think. And then I'll say something as simple as when you go to work, be kind, be humble, you know, be willing to have difficult conversations if they need to be had because they can bring you to a greater place. And it's in those simple moments that I've had so many people come up to me and say, hey, you know, this this was really great. Like I never really thought about it. You know, a lot of times presenters, trainers, coaches, they probably try to give you new frameworks, which are all great. But sometimes it's the most simple things that someone can tell you that can really be a big light bulb moment that you can lean into and have a have your life truly be transformed and different from one simple statement. If that person is listening to your heart. Thanks for joining us on I Finally Get It. To learn more about Keisha or Beacon of Light, check out the show notes. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you're a business owner and you have a light bulb moment that would help another business owner, Reach out to me at jeff at ifinallygetit.com.